Okay. This meeting is being recorded. There we go. All right. Hey, guys, this is um, welcome to the Rotary office um, or what is now known as the Rotary office or my home. Um, <clears throat> I'm glad you guys could join today for a little bit of orientation. I think I, I zip filed a bunch of stuff to you got to everybody. Um, actually, as I was going through setting up um, this orientation um, or this meeting, I realized I need to update a couple of things in my zip file. So um, I'll send those to you after this meeting. Um, why don't we take just a few minutes, uh, a couple minutes to introduce each other. Um, you, I'll go first um, because you guys don't know as much about me as um, as some others. I am the executive director here, have been for about 15 years. Um, uh, my rotary experience starts with, um, as many of us, with my father who is in rotary in Canton, Ohio. Um, and then I was a charter member of another club here in Franklin County in 2003. So um, I've been a, a Rotarian a little longer, uh, about five, six years longer than I've been um, the executive director, um, but it's been a fun ride. There's been stuff, um, opportunities all over the country and all over the world that have been afforded to me as well as friendships and stuff like that. Um, dad of two boys, um, empty nester, finally. Mm -hmm. uh, my youngest son is in his senior year of college um, down in Southeast Florida. If you follow, if you read the newsletter last week, I unplugged from Rotary um, just to play swim dad last week, which was yeah. enjoyable. So um, Ashley, go ahead and, and tell us a little about yourself. So my name's Ashley Linkefelter. Um, I am a lean engineer currently in um, London, Ohio at Nissan Chemitech, which is a plastic injection mold company. Um, so I've been here for about four years total um, in various roles, but mostly in the lean engineer. Um, I went to Ohio State for industrial engineering and I worked at a few different manufacturers, um, Moen and then the Bakke Labs out in New Albany. So I've done maintenance with them. And then out in Moen, I did uh, manufacturing engineering. So kind of few different things, um, but mostly with like process engineering and things like that. So um, and then Scott Whitlock, he actually visited our facility. I believe it was last year um, and I met him and kind of showed him around things that I'm doing right now. So I'm working mostly with automation right now, kind of trying to implement that. And so he was pretty intrigued by that and just my story. And so he asked me if I wanted to join Rotary more so to speak to students about maybe future career opportunities um, because I've had a lot of internships and different exposures to different things. So um, trying to go through that aspect um, and the career path awards, things like that. So that's kind of how I got involved in Rotary. Um, one other thing that I started doing recently was teaching at um, Tolls Career Center. So I teach adult education there, mostly with uh, technicians. So that's been pretty fun to start doing recently fill my evenings up <laughs> you're not too far from my house when you're teaching there i'm 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 oh, really uh, yeah i'm over in hilliard so Neat. not not too far at all you're up walt. awesome sounds good um so I'm, I'm walt and uh i have been in columbus for i'd say almost six years now so a little bit of backstory on me is i was in the military and um, spent time kind of moving all over the country with, with the Army. And um, my wife, who's from Youngstown, Ohio, we kind of had a deal that uh, once once I got out of the military, you know, she kind of had first say in where we settled down and started a family. And couldn't be any happier here in Columbus. And so I'm um, used to GI Bill to go back to school um, at Ohio State and currently work at uh, Chase. Uh, I've got two, two children. I've got a five-year-old son and a two-year-old daughter that uh, keep me busy. Uh, my wife is a, a school teacher in Hilliard, and uh, we're, we're lucky to, to live in Hilliard as well, Scott. So we're, as you've said, we're, we're neighbors. And uh, my uh, my introduction to Rotary was actually through the uh, 
mentorship program that the Rotary has with Ohio State. So uh, Hugo Trucks was my mentor and uh, still is actually. We still um, kept in touch, uh, you know, and, and still do now. Um, but uh, really excited to be a part of Rotary and thankful for the opportunity. Yeah, Hugo, um, I, here's a funny thing. I met with both Scott Whitlock and Hugo Trucks this morning because they're on the foundation board. So at eight o'clock this morning, we had a foundation board meeting. Um, Scott's the current president and Hugo's the incoming president. So um, so I, I've talked to both of them at length this morning already. Um, the, the other thing, Walt, about Hugo and... Um, He's one of our top recruiters. Um, he has recruited over his lifetime over 50 people into Rotary, not just oh, wow. clubs, Rotary, but other Rotary clubs. And he and he and I and a couple other people in our club, I think a couple other two, I think, um, mm -hmm. actually are lo um, are on record at Rotary International in Chicago, and they started a, a recruiters society, like a new member recruiting society. And we were two of the first members um, listed there as um, as how many people we've recruited into Rotary. So it's That's kind of awesome. fun to, to have that distinction um, along with Hugo because he's been at it longer than I have. So so Columbus Rotary, you're both you've both been around a little bit and seen what's going on. You know that we are um, we're well you. We are uh, overseen by a board, um, board of directors. Uh, right now, we're in <clears throat> president number, female president number two of what will eventually be four in a row. Um, the interesting thing is that's only out, um, Dana's only, and I might misspeak, Dana's only our fifth female president, and we have been around for 110 years. Now, part of that is because women were not allowed in Rotary until the mid 1980s, but, um, <clears throat> and I've had, I had one streak where I had two women in a row, um, then I had a, um, someone by herself, and now to have four women in a row. So anyway, <laughs> it's, it's different. It's just it's just a little different, but it's nice to have them all in a row and working together. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, in fact, I, I need to reach out to Rotary International to see we might be one of the few organizations to one of the few clubs to actually log four female presidents in a row because I don't know of any other club that's done that, um, which would be kind of a cool thing. So you also know that we raised some money in Rotary. <clears throat> and I just told someone this this morning. Um, Columbus Rotary is Columbus Rotary is really two organizations. It's the Columbus Rotary Club and the Columbus Rotary Foundation. Hugo and Scott are part of the foundation. There's a separate board uh, that actually runs that part of, of uh, Columbus Rotary, the Columbus Rotary Foundation. And mostly what they're focusing on at the foundation level is fundraising, outside fundraising, not necessarily from our pockets, um, that inside fundraising, the annual campaign, which we just finished, um, and, and <clears throat> the fiduciary responsibility of maintaining the funds. We have a, a little over $2 million um, in funds that sits there, and that's really their role. The club board does everything else, does <laughs> does the weekly meetings, the the service projects, the um, the everything that doesn't have to do every fundraising piece it doesn't have to do with the annual campaign. So last year we did um, um, an art auction, a wildlife art auction. Um, we do the Walking with the Dead 5K. We do a number of other things like that. And it, most of what you see in Rotary is the club board. Those um, contact lists, if you ever need them, are um, available in the members only section of the website. Um, I emailed something out last week about how to get into that section, but I will follow up this meeting with those contact lists for you so that you have names and phone numbers of the officers and stuff like that. Um, 
you probably I don't know how many of the videos in the in the orientation you watched and I don't want to play all of them because it'll take up a lot of time. Most of the people have already watched the why rotary video because it's on our it's on our website, it's on our it's on our YouTube page. By the way, if you haven't watched it, it we do have a YouTube page, <clears throat> Columbus Rotary. Um, that hosts a lot of videos. Um, eventually, it will host, host this recording. Um, it, you can also go back and catch every speaker or most every speaker that has come to the club. Um, and you can go back in the files and, and find all of our speakers. Um, so that's kind of a cool thing. I'm trying to remember what video I have up. I know what, what video I have up. So, but Rotary started in 1905 in. Um, in Chicago, Illinois, by a guy named Paul Harris. Paul was an attorney who wanted to get to know other people from other vocations, not just attorneys. Um, so really he started, um, don't tell anyone this and let's turn off the recording, I say in jest. Really he started what is now the oldest networking club um, opportunity in the world. Um, we know Rotary as a service organization, but Paul Harris really started Rotary to network with other professionals outside of the legal profession because he was an attorney. So he started this thing with an engineer, a dairy operator, and maybe a printer, four different guys, actually four different faiths. Um, and really some, two of the guys are, businesses that aren't much business anymore you know like the way outside of business right now and they called it rotary because they rotated between they had lunch once a week together and they rotated between everyone's office every week and that's how they got the name rotary mm -hmm. um it wasn't in until three or four years down the road that they had their first service project um and it got so big that other people want, had heard about it and wanted to start um, their own Rotary Clubs. The interesting thing is some of like the second and third Rotary Club are actually out in California and you don't think about that. You're like, so what? They, Paul Harris jumped on a plane at Chicago O'Hare in 1905 and flew out to Chicago and flew out to LAX. No, he got on a train and went cross country to LAX um, to uh, to start the, the second and third Rotary Clubs out on the West Coast. And there's Amanda Bowen. Oh, she's not there yet. She's getting mm -hmm. close. There's Amanda Bowen, past president and current membership director. Um, Hi she, everyone, sorry I'm late. That, um, <laughs> so Paul Harris really went up, above and beyond to, to start Rotary around the country. And we were the uh, only the 38th club ever started in, in the country. So to still be around and be one of the first 100 clubs is another kind of milestone that, that um, Rotary International looks at as far as, um, as far as, you know, being one of the first 100 clubs. Um, Nelson French, our, oldest member um, who is also district governor who is also um, a Rotarian of the Year and on Monday we'll be presenting our next Rotarian of the Year. Um, wrote, Nelson also in that orientation material has a short video about some club history. Good to go back and review if you haven't um, because there's a lot of things we used to do back in the 50s and 60s that um, that we don't do anymore. Um, even into the 80s and 90s, we actually started the um, Columbus Marathon uh, wheelchair division and not only started it, we ran the entire wheelchair race for the Columbus Marathon. Um, once it got so big and so successful, we turned it over to the marathon to run for themselves. But we were the ones who who brought in the original concept and, and manned the original you know, hosted all the wheelchair athletes and uh, did all that as part of the Columbus Marathon. So there's a lot of stuff that Nelson brings out in his, his video um, that talks about some of the older projects, including one that he started called Camp Enterprise, which was it it taught 
high school students about the free enterprise system. That actually is a national model that many other Rotary Clubs around the country do. We set it aside for a couple of years because of COVID and our lack of access to the schools. Um, but there has been some discussion about starting it back up um, in the next year or so once we identify a new leader for that. Um, so that's, that's another cool thing that we've done. Um, again, kind of setting us above um, uh, a, a number of other Rotary Clubs because we have uh, something that uh, something that a lot of other clubs do uh, that started right here in Columbus, Ohio. Um, I do I, I do want to show you this graphic. I keep talking about Rotary International and <clears throat> our Rotary District. Um, where's the graphic? It's this graphic. Um, so can you all see that? Let's see, there it is. Um, so this graphic is, this Rotary International is based on geographic regions, let's just call it. And um, this one shows that clubs make, Rotary clubs make up di Rotary districts. And Rotary, our Rotary district is Southeastern Ohio. It's that little area that says 6690 on the map in the middle of the, of the page there. Um, there's about 60 Rotary clubs in, in Central and Southeastern Ohio that make up this Rotary district. Um, there are actually five Rotary districts in, um, in Ohio. You would think that there would be four, but long, long time ago, Cleveland carved out its own um, district. And so the fifth district is kind of right there around metropolitan Cleveland. But so all of our clubs, the 17 clubs in Franklin County, all the rest of the 40 rest of the clubs in central and southeastern Ohio make up Rotary District 6690. Price um, Finley is our current governor. Um, Amanda Bowen is an assistant governor. <clears throat> um, you have to be a club president to be um, be uh, an officer at the uh, at the district level. Um, we just named on Monday, it was just announced that past president Sandy Knazel will be the district governor in um, 25, 26. So that's another big thing to have a district governor come from your club. Our last district governor was Steve Heiser and he, he took over right in the middle of COVID. So we didn't get all the pomp and circumstance you normally get with having a district governor in your club. Um, there's a special banner that shows up um, at the club and we didn't have in-person meetings to have that special banner up. We didn't, I mean, it was, it was just a weird year. So it'll be fun to have a normal rotary year and Sandy be the governor, district governor. Um, I always call it grand poobah. If you used to ever watch the Flintstones, um, <clears throat> the grand poobah was the head of Fred Flintstones um, fraternal organization, which I can't remember what their name was right now. Mm -hmm. Um, so clubs make up districts and then districts technically make up a different area, but let's just say districts makes up Rotary International. At the end of the day, Rotary International oversees all of our stuff. It is really though driven everything in Rotary. A lot of it's driven from the club level, um, up to Rotary International. There's not a lot that comes from Rotary International in Chicago, in Evanston, and comes down and says, you have to do it this way. A lot of it is you do it how your club wants to do it. But they put on an international conference every year. You can actually take a tour of, um, if you're in Chicago, you can um, you can take a tour of the Rotary offices, um, things like that. We've been fortunate enough to have a number of um, Rotary international presidents visit our club and are friendly with a couple of them, including John Germ, who was the last uh, Rotary international president to um, visit our club. John's a good old boy from Chattanooga, Tennessee. And actually my counterpart in Tennessee is who first introduced me to, to John. But that just gives you a little bit about the hierarchy of, of Rotary. Um, any questions? Good, because then now we get to watch a movie. Anything there, Amanda? No? Okay, 
Good, because now we're going to watch a movie and please pray to God this thing plays. <laughs> um, Because sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. Just, all right, it looks like it's going to play. Please, I hope the video, the audio is working. Yes? No audio? There it is. <laughs> Stopping it there because as Amanda knows. Why though, Scott? That's the most exciting, scintillating movie I've ever seen in my life. Because the Please district doesn't that. use the district <laughs> doesn't use club runners. So all that stuff about fine district stories and da 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 da. da. Um <clears throat> however, um if you haven't put Club Runner onto your uh on your phone yet it's a free app it's called club runner um <clears throat> it really become it, it's really a great way to have our directory at your fingertips um your if your email address that you gave me and the word rotary 38 capital r um will get will log you into club runner <clears throat> You can change that later. You can change your your password and all that stuff later, but it it gets you into Club Runner and um, like I said, it's really our directory. The same email password and um, email address gets you into our website, also called Club Runner, and you can get your documents and see more stuff than is on here. Um, but that that's really how we kind of keep in touch with the directory. I am, like I said, I will send you a paper directory after this um, in case you want it in PDF form because people, some people in our club like paper still, don't they, Amanda? <laughs> yeah. So um, has have you guys been on Club Runner? Have you have had a chance to look at it or anything like that? The website, not the app. I didn't oh. know there was an app, so that's really helpful. Yeah, yeah. So, and part of this is one of the reasons we don't use all the functionality is um, the other staff you see here in the office. <clears throat> um, I just haven't been able to train my dog to uh, get <laughs> all the stories uploaded up to uh, Club Runner, but we'll get that eventually here. Um, so that's Club Runner. Uh, what's next? Club Runner, uh, Club Runner, logging into the website. I got that. Um, we we talked a little about the Columbus Rotary Foundation before Amanda joined us, um, and and not to be confused. And if you're ever confused, please ask me or someone. Um, cause it, when you, and I try not to focus on this a lot during, um, the first orientation, um, because the, the foundation can get confusing in rotary. I mean, I've got guys that have guys and ladies who've been here 20, 30 years that are still confused about this kind of stuff, but we really have, we really have our foundation, the Columbus Rotary Foundation. And then there is called, their Rotary International has 
the Rotary Foundation. You will get you will get solicitations from the Rotary Foundation. You also get solicitations. I think recently something came out on the 125 Club that came from the district, but all those monies go to not to us, go to Evanston, Illinois. Um, so if you ever have any questions, please just ask me. Somebody just sent me something yesterday. Hey, I, I donated to the foundation. I'm like, yeah, the, the Rotary International Foundation, but okay. But <laughs> that, we eventually we see that money um, in the way of matching grants and other funds that come from the district, but um, it just, it, it takes a while. It's a little confusing and it takes a while to, to kind of get an understanding from that. So if you ever have any questions, just ask because it's better to ask than to <clears throat> think you were counted towards um, something and then the money ends up in Chicago instead of in uh, in one of Walt's um, banking competitors <clears throat> here in Columbus, Ohio, <laughs> um, that we may have been working with since I have passbooks from the forties from them. So. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about is committees, because really the lifeblood of Columbus Rotary is our committees. And we have a lot of committees. You don't see all of them. Um, you don't hear about all of them. I don't even know if I pulled up the committee list. I had a, I had a committee list earlier today. Um, you don't see all of them. You don't hear about all of them. That's one of the things that the committee fair that we're having on the 19th will be about to, to ha have a little better understanding and talk to people about all the different committees. One of the reasons you don't always hear from them is because sometimes the committees are so focused on what they're doing. They, Amanda, back me up. They forget to tell everybody else that there's a service project coming up. So just the committee members may go to pizza night at Windsor STEM elementary school and then we find out about it later and we're like, why didn't you tell the rest of the club? You probably could have had 15 volunteers, 20 volunteers. They're like, oh, we forgot to ask the rest of the club. So um, <clears throat> not to point out anybody in <laughs> anyone particular, but um, there's just a ton of things to do. There's a ton of ways to get involved. Um, a really good, cool way to see the types of projects that we do at Columbus Rotary is to look at Rotary's areas of focus. And Rotary's areas of focus look a bit like this. There it is. Um, look a bit like this. So there are actually, are there seven areas of focus now? Sorry, when I started, there were only five. Um, no, there were four and then there were five and now there's seven. So sometimes it takes me a while to keep up with it all. Um, but all of our projects fall into these seven categories. Um, so you see peace building, disease and conflict resolution or conflict prevention, disease prevention treatment, water sanitation hygiene, maternal health, basic basic education and literacy, community uh, economic development, and environment. So those I want to interject wanna... really quick, though, Scott. Um, <clears throat> the one of my favorite things about Rotary that I always tell people is like, this is kind of our, this is our guideline for service projects, but you can really, if there's something you're excited about or something you're passionate about, or if you, you know, hear about something in your neighborhood that needs to be done, like, don't be shy and, and bring it to Rotary and we will almost always do it and help find a way to to participate and get it done like tell we, your, i love story. right tell well <laughs> i love dog stuff too so like even though animals isn't on there like we've done some stuff with the dog shelter and we're doing some things coming up in 2023 with columbus humane um and when i first started with rotary we i had heard a podcast about um how in fostering um, a lot of times children have to carry their belongings in garbage bags because, um, they, you know, 
they don't have the resources to provide suitcases for all the students or for all the kids. So they just throw all their things in a garbage bag. And like, obviously that's very demoralizing for the kids because, you know, I always tell people you don't end up in foster care because things are going well at home. So, you know, to when you're finally placed in the foster system, it's really like things have gotten to a pretty critical point. And then to have to carry all of your things in garbage bags is just like the worst. So I had only been a member, I think, for like three months. And I came to the leadership at the time, Scott and the president. And I said, you know, I really would love to do like a suitcase drive. Could we do that? And they were just like, yeah, sure. Like, go for it. Take charge. Go ahead. And we ended up. Hey, um, hey, it was a little longer than that. You're like, well, who's in charge? And we're like, you are. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it ended up being really cool because we, I reached out to Franklin County Children's Services and they were like, you know, yes, that is a thing that happens. We try to get ahead of it and provide suitcases to the kids because we know like the emotional and mental impact of using garbage bags. But what we really need are actually backpacks. And so we ended up doing a backpack drive for them for two years before they ended up taking ownership of it themselves. And we collected hundreds of backpacks for them. So, um, you know, if there's something that speaks to you that, you know, you really are interested in that we're not doing, that's, you know, that's just what I really love about Rotary. It's, it's not like, and I don't want to diss any other nonprofit, but it's not like, you know, the American Heart Association where we focus on just, you know, heart things or just, you know, whatever, we, we have the ability to be nimble and, and pivot to take care of whatever needs to be done. I love to use corporate jargon, so I'm sorry. Well, well two, <laughs> thing, two things too. Um, the first year we delivered backpacks, Amanda and I are the ones who took the backpacks over and we had staff members at Franklin County Children's Services crying on our shoulders because they were about 200 backpacks short and for what we we showed up on Thursday, I think, and they mm -hmm. were giving them out on Saturday and they had yeah. no idea where they're going to get 200 more backpacks. And we show up with 200 backpacks. Yeah. And so they were literally crying on our shoulders, um, which was kind of cool. The other cool thing, you know, when when Amanda says we're able to pivot and do stuff, you know, if you saw in the newsletter or some of the stuff we've talked about in the past. Our really close, not that I like to say this. No, I like to say this, not that I'm, I, our really close relationship with Green Lawn Cemetery here mm -hmm. in, in the county, they called me and said, hey, Scott, um, we've got this, this um, orphan baby that we just realized doesn't have a headstone. And the history behind it is Columbus Rotary supported this baby back in the 1920s. Um, when they, it was found and then said they were going to put up a headstone, but some, I guess everything fell through the cracks, blah, 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 blah. Well, when they called us, what, a year and a half ago, Amanda, we said, yes, okay, we'll put up a headstone. How much does it cost? And so it was just, it, that all came to fruition this last fall where some, this baby that we started supporting as an orphan back in 1920 mm -hmm. and eventually he passed away and was uh, laid to rest at Green Lawn Cemetery. A hundred years later, they come and say, hey, could you put up a headstone? And we're like, yeah, sure. We got to finish that project. So it was really kind of cool, right? You know, it, mm -hmm. it's it, rather than think of it on the morbid side, it was really kind of cool that we came to, you know, we had that opportunity to finish a project that had fallen through the cracks. Um, well, I don't think either you, you, I don't think you were at the meeting where when I announced this about a year ago, I, the first thing I said was, before you ask any questions, we don't know who made the commitment and no one here was alive when the commitment was made. So let's move past whose fault it was that the, the, the headstone was never put in place. And let's focus on we're putting a headstone in place, right? Mm -hmm. So um and and what we had like 10 people on two news stations out there the day yeah. that it came out so we're really kind of excited about that and um we're researching for instance like right now we're researching a partnership with um charity newsies and charity newsies is the organization in town that 
provides a, a coat, gloves, and hat, um, and something else, which I'm forgetting right off the top of my head, to um, kids in the in the school system, mostly elementary and junior high kids, but they'll they'll take care of high school kids too, um, that just can't afford that. And through an introduction to their new executive director, we're working on. Um, no, 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 no. Uh, a, oh, by the way, Amanda's a dog owner. And yeah, I'm sorry. Owner. That's why I stay on mute because I have like two giant dogs that are trying to sit on my lap right now as and we're so, doing that. Again, why we are are involved with the with the dog park at Scioto Audubon <laughs> Metro Park and a bunch of and the Humane Society and stuff like that. Um, but you'll probably be hearing about uh, what right now we're calling the back to school bash. Um, that would that would become a partnership with um, um, charity newsies, and but it would bring in county organizations and job placement organizations and food trucks and all sorts of stuff for kids going back to school. So we'd probably do this like next July, um, and uh, that partnership's just getting off the ground to kind of because of an idea, literally the their executive director and I were sharing coffee and we just started throwing stuff, you know, throwing mud at the wall, talking about executive director things. And we're like, wait, what if we combine, what if we combined our efforts? And so now we have this big, really kind of cool project that we're going to introduce to the club probably in February um, to take from there. Hey, Amanda. So there's a lot of different things. Amanda, do you want to share the recent news? <laughs> Um, and if they both pass out and quit, we'll know that, you know, we shouldn't, we shouldn't share with anybody else about walking with the dead. What part of the news about it? New members walking with the dead. Oh, yes. So we have an event. It was only a month ago, Amanda. It was only <laughs> Well, I just wanted to be like, clarify which part of it, but. Oh, yes. Yeah. We right. have an event called walking with the dead. Um, and it is a 5k or one mile fun walk. I don't know how exactly you want to describe it. It's a 5k at Green Lawn Cemetery. Um, obviously we have a partnership with them. So they, and they want to have these types of events in the cemetery, just obviously, or they wouldn't let us do it. It's not like we like gate crash. Um, it's at night. It's Halloween ish weekend. Um, <clears throat> it's very fun. Um, it could be way more fun. And that's something that we're working on. Why are you making that face? Oh, no, I'm, I, I'm not looking at you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, so that's part of what we are hoping to get some help with. So this in 2023, it's going to be our fifth year and we are really trying to, take this to the next level. And um, we are planning on applying to break a Guinness World Record for the most people dressed like ghosts, which is a pretty modest number. I think it's like 519, um, which I think we should be able to achieve. Um, and we're hoping that new members will help on this committee. Um, we have been a very small group in the past, like three of us, basically. Yeah, three, three to five. Yeah, yeah so um, we're kind of breaking it up this year. There's going to be a group that's going to work on the race aspect of it. <clears throat> it's going to be head by um, Tracy, um, one of our members who's a big, she's big into running. Um, and another one of our runners, Hallie Marquis, who um, is also into running. So they're going to kind of co-chair the running aspect of things. And then I'm going to lead up the, because I obviously don't run, um, like the fun end of things. So I'm going to work on the Guinness World Record facilitating part, um, you know, work on sponsorships, food trucks, alcohol, all the good stuff, really. Um, so we would like new members, if you guys are interested or open to it, um, to help us with that and hopefully join us on that committee because we need some fresh ideas. We need some fresh 
everything. And, and, and the idea, the idea is to guide and give you something, a committee to be on. I know Ashley, mm -hmm. you're kind of already on the, the career path committee, mm -hmm. right? but to kind of give, give a committee to, to focus on as you're finding your way around other projects and other things in, in Columbus mm -hmm. Rotary. But this is more of a fun event, fundraiser, fun event. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, it'll help us um, have just a little, a little more legs. I think our, what our biggest year was 250. Yeah. It's not a huge number, but um, we've already, I mean, we already started talking about, which is totally not a normal Columbus Rotary thing. We already started talking about next year before this year's event. Mm -hmm. um, and with this event, I think, you know, there are so many ways for people to be involved on the committee. People can talk, you know, if you're interested in promoting the event, you can work on that team. You could help with like the, you know, planning the food and beverage part. You could do the, you know, we want to talk about like, if you really love animals in the past, we had done like a dog costume contest, which was really fun. And I think we need to bring that back because people did do like couples contest or couples costumes with their dogs. It was really cute. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, there's like, we've, we've talked like expand it because let's be honest. I mean, I don't know how many five K's or things you guys have been to, but 250 people for um, a Halloween themed event in a cemetery at night, I think is really low. I think that it has the potential to be so much better because I think it's a really unique event. You can go to a 5K any weekend in Columbus, but you can't go to very many at night in a cemetery. So I think and it has we, Yeah, so and much. then we combine afterwards, there's haunted tours. Yes, we, yeah. We talked about, um, what, have, what else have we talked about? We, we've talked Doing in a the bike past tour, about- Like a twilight the, bike tour. The, the pumpkins. We've talked in the past about having pumpkins for kids to decorate and be able to take with them and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. it, there's so many opportunities, but three to five people can't get all that done. So we will be inviting all new members starting as back in July, all the way up until the October event to join the committee. So if, if you, you'll see invites to meetings and, and stuff like that. If you don't want to be on, just let us know. But that's that's some of our news. Um, that's a new way of us looking at it. And the board is in support of that. Um, so um, the last thing I have to say is we do have a YouTube channel. It does, like I said, it does have all of uh, a number of our videos on it. We have a YouTube channel, a Facebook page, LinkedIn page. Twitter account and kind of an Instagram account, but kind of. <laughs> we kind of have a LinkedIn page too, but I haven't been putting a lot up on it lately. Um, we are in the midst of um, rehabbing our web page. Um, so if you have any ideas or if you have any thoughts about as a new member, what you, what it would have been easier to see on the webpage, please let me know. Um, we're trying to streamline it. We're trying to make it more, um, since I am clearly the youngest one, um, of the four of us on here, we're trying to make it more something that the three of you are attracted to, not what the old guy who's not a web designer um, although I didn't do this one, somebody else did this one. Um, but, but we're just trying to make it look fresher and have, uh, have some more content, um, more of, of an outward facing content than we have a lot of inward facing content there right now. And so we're trying to make it a little bit different. So if, uh, if you have any ideas, please feel free to share them with me and I'll, take that to our next two president, two of our next presidents who are on the web development team, um, Emily Chapman and Jason Southworth. So um, that's all I have because I could go on for probably two more hours and show you a lot of videos and a lot <laughs> and a lot of other examples and stuff. Are they as good as the Club Runner video? They're better. 
<laughs> I have this video that I'll let me share this video from our golf outing two years ago. <laughs> no. Of, of our then president taking a charity shot for one of our foursomes. Let me find that video real quick. Scott, do not. I was, it was me. I was overserved and I screamed some obscenities because I swung and I didn't even come close to hitting the ball. Yeah. It was just not good. And Scott still has that video. Do. And I hold it over her head occasionally. Occasionally. It's not good. It has not hit the public airwaves yet, but it is freaking hilarious. <laughs> so embarrassing i mean it is everything you want in a golf video that you never think you're actually going to see happen in person and then it happens in front of you <laughs> the first time it happened i wasn't recording and then the second time i recorded it so. just kept happening <laughs> yeah. it just kept the, happening. the other thing i'll tell you you know um is there are a lot of friendships that you uh make in rotary um when you serve together and when that is you, true and when you fellowship together and stuff and i don't know where we are on the screen but this one down here which is that one smiling there and i have had one of those um friendships that probably if not for rotary we would not be friends mm -mm. i mean different circles different life experiences different everything everything but, yeah, but if not for Rotary, we wouldn't be friends. But um, mm -hmm. um, it's it's been it's been an enjoyable friendship, um, getting to know Amanda better, and um, so that's one of the you know I go back to saying that Paul Harris started this networking group that became a service group that really truly is a networking group. That's one of the things that you can't capture on a piece of paper or in a video or all that kind of stuff, the, the friendships that are, um, that are made. I just texted another Rotarian today who, um, who I met, actually he was the president when, when I was hired and he has invited me to, um, his, his, um, uh, farm outside of Baroque State Forest a number of times and and um it's one of those places when I go I just have a chance to relax and and set rotary aside for a little bit and had it not been for my friendship with with Rob um that opportunity never would have happened um and now I've been out there enough that I could walk you around his farm and show you everything about his farm without him being there um and like I said, without without meeting him through Rotary, that never would have that never would have happened. Yeah, we can go look for Sasquatch. Um, although I don't believe he's out there. He definitely is down there. He is down <laughs> there. But I haven't heard him out there um, yet. Uh, but it just it just it's one of those things, right? You know, um, you you uh, Ashley knows Scott Whitlock, right? Oh. So Ashley. Scott Whitlock and my father are relatively the same age and used to serve on the Ohio Manufacturers Council together. Hmm. I mean, there are um, there are several members of my club that when my when I first got um, I'm trying to look for it real quick if I have it here um, when I first got here I don't see it right off the top of my head. We had a we had a trifle uh, uh, directory right that you flip through, um, and my dad's flipping through and he goes, "Oh, I used to be on the Ohio Chamber Board with that guy. Oh, I know that guy." I'm like, "Dad, you know more people in my club than I do." Oh, I know that. <laughs> well, it's just kind of cool that you know Scott Whitlock and I have that connection through my father, mm -hmm. right? Um, Dwight Hurd at um, I don't think you guys have met Dwight Hurd. Dwight Hurd is a couple of years older than my father and Dwight Hurd and my dad met when my dad was a summer associate at Dwight Hurd's law firm. I mean, it's, and without Rotary, I wouldn't know these guys that met my dad years ago. Right. So that's part of the reason, I, that's part of the reason that you'll always hear me say, I would rather see you at a happy hour 
or the coal rain Christmas party or something like that than on Monday at noon at St. John the Baptist Church. Because where you really get to know people in Rotary, where you really get to talk to people because we don't have an agenda like that is at all these other things we do, right? You know, even during COVID, we sponsored, what was that called? First Fridays. We were doing oh, First yeah. Fridays. And um, during COVID, we, we, we wanted to get together. So um, my Nana Fribley got us all together in area parks and we brought our coffee on a Friday morning and our lawn chairs and sat six feet apart in some park and had coffee together. And I think we had 20 people at one mm -hmm. of them, you know, and we only did it when it was warm, but, you know, in one time we met in, uh, um, in a pavilion and had lunch together, like two people at a table kind of thing. Mm -hmm. it was, but that's what, that's kind of where you get to know Rotary and Rotarians. Um, it's really hard on Mondays to get to know people. So, mm -hmm. I mean, Walt and I are going to meet here soon at, at Crooked Can. That, that is a good spot for sure. There's or, a WCOL beer. Did you know that, Scott? I didn't know, I didn't know that. Or Crooked at, Can has a WCOL beer. Well, what we should do, Walt, is we should drive out and have dinner at Der Dutchman with Ashley before she goes to ah, Tolls. Yes. <laughs> like have early dinner and then she can go teach her classes at Tolls. I might fall asleep. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, like I said, that's, it's hard. Do you, do you guys have any questions? It, it's hard to explain, like I said, um, until you really have lived it. But what questions can we answer for you in the last couple minutes of our time together today. Uh, this was really helpful and um, you know, absolutely willing to help the uh, Green Lawn, you know, 5K. That that cool. sounds like a lot of fun. And I, whatever aspect of that you need folks to help with, just you know, pencil me in. I'd be more than happy. But I've to got help. twenty. I've got twenty T-shirts that people ordered that I have yet to tell them that they've now arrived. So <laughs> that's on my list of things to do today. But um, yeah. Yeah, I'd definitely be interested too. I know I was kind of partially involved at first and then. Um, oh, yeah. You know. yeah, 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 yeah. Well, just for like one meeting, we spoke about it, but um, definitely, yeah, for next year, I think. And actually, that's what I, you know, we know you can't come on Mondays. We get <laughs> it. But that doesn't mean you can't do every, you know, anything else that fits into your schedule. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, that's why we try to make that all available to anybody. Um, about the only person who's not involved right now is Teddy Dameron because Teddy uh, moved to the island of Antigua um, or the island nation of Antigua and Barbuda um, where he grew up after... Uh, at, well, tragically, after his wife passed away. So, um, but I mean, I just, Teddy, again, one of my closest friends um, through Rotary, I texted him today about some stuff. So, you know, we're now my, you know, thousands of miles apart. I think it's 2000, maybe 2,500. And thanks to the internet and in our friendship in Rotary, we can still stay in touch. So, um, but those are some of the cool things about Rotary. Um, if you have any questions, please ask me. Please ask Amanda. Mm -hmm. She'll tell you to ask me. Yes. <laughs> um, and let's just keep in touch and keep going, um, moving forward. Is that good? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think um, before we are finished, um, for next week, the Christmas party, I think is, I saw an email about that. I had a question about the wrapping. It said it was, potentially to be determined i didn't know if it was or if that was yeah so it it was just finalized like monday morning okay uh, the wrapping party is 3 30 at the school um okay. 3 30 to whenever we get done um um and that all depends on what they have us wrap and how many people show up um the school is if you're familiar with Columbus, the school is directly east of the Flag Lady Flag Store in in Worthington. It, mm -hmm. it sits between High Street and Indianola. 
um, on a road called uh, East Weisheimer. So it's kind of easy to get to 499 East Weisheimer. Um, but go up to the uh, <clears throat> door by the the playground parking lot and um, ring in and if you're available and um, and come in and help wrap presents. Last mm -hmm. year, our challenge was what they had us wrap and how many people showed up. I think we finished wrapping in what, 10 minutes? Yeah, by the time I got there, everyone was done. Mm -hmm. But we did do happy hour afterwards and that no, was we fun. Did do happy hour afterwards, which... <laughs> I actually live right in Clintonville, so that's like right around the corner. So oh yeah, that's yeah. perfect. Well, that'd be perfect. Good yeah. places after. <laughs> Where did we go? We went down. A uh, rusty bucket. Rusty bucket, some place like that. So yeah, mm -hmm. so it was cold and wet and windy and rainy and so anyway, that's enough for today. But um, I'll send you stuff about that, Ashley, so you see it. Um, okay. And and it's it's you don't have to sign up. It's just whoever shows up and whenever we show up. So. Okay. All right. We let me pause.